What is up, dudes? Welcome back to Reviews of Equipment ROE. First off, I just wanted to thank everyone who gave my last video a like, a comment, or even subscribed after watching it. It was really cool to see that, and it means a lot to me to keep the channel going. For today's video, I thought I'd go over something that I think is almost as important, if not equally as important, as the EDC weapon you choose, and I think that is the holster you put it in. Whenever you buy a gun that you intend to carry, you need a good holster for it. So I'm going to be comparing some popular holster choices, and specifically the ones that I tried out for several years before landing on the one I use today. I'll be using a set of categories I came up with to evaluate each one, in order of most important in my opinion down to the least important and how they rack and stack on each one. These categories are concealment, construction, compatibility, comfort, cost, and customization. Lots of C's. When I bought my first Glock 19 a few years ago, I didn't know jack about concealed holsters because I only dealt with outside the waistband level 3 retention holsters at work. But I knew I needed one, so I quickly did a little bit of research and landed on the TXC Holsters X1 Ally. Well, not a bad choice, it definitely has its ups and downs. As far as concealment goes, it does the trick. It has adjustable belt clips that you can move up or down to suit your preference. And it has a strong integrated concealment claw, but it is not initially adjustable, as the original packaging for the X1 only comes with one concealment wing. You can buy others but they are sold separately and they require you to use an allen key to remove screws holding the right belt clip onto the holster which are also the weapon retention screws as well next up we have construction i find this holster to be well made the polymer feels pretty durable however along with construction comes its retention mechanism the retention screws are also what hold on the belt clips and the concealment claw i find that these screws often get loose forcing me to tighten them down a lot However, this causes the retention strength to be way too high, so I have to yank this thing out of there. It also has a bungee system that connects the mag caddy to the holster itself, and this is both a pro and a con in my mind because while it adds a slight bit of flex for comfort, I did find it to be a little too floppy and loose when it actually has the weapon and a full extra magazine in it. For compatibility, the holster can take a lot of different weapon and weapon-like combinations. Just check their website for more info. I originally did not have a weapon light for my Glock 19, so I just bought the standard weapon and Mag Caddy X1 Ally. As I mentioned before, the Comfort is better than most holsters because it has a relatively small footprint and the bungee system bends and flexes to your body. Now cost, it is technically the cheapest of the three with no add-ons, but when built out in exactly the same setup as the other ones, it would come out to around $130 for when I bought it. Which brings me to my last point, that it is extremely customizable. You can change the color of everything, down to the washers and the shot cord, so if you're under that, they got you covered. I do wish that the concealment cloth size was easier to swap out because it does require tools. So all said and done, using a super in-depth thumbs up, thumbs down ranking system, I would give it a thumbs up for concealment, comfort, and customization. A sideways thumb for compatibility could be better, and a thumbs down for construction and cost. Once I upgraded to the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS, I also wanted to upgrade my holster since I had a few gripes with the TXC X1 Ally. So I went with a tier 1 concealed Axis Elite. In terms of concealment, it definitely does its job. It too has adjustable belt clips that you can move up or down to suit your preference. Its concealment claw is way easier to adjust than the TXC since it comes with several plastic inserts that you can leave in or take out, up to you. Next up we have construction. I feel like the Axis Elite is as strong if not stronger than the TXC in terms of durability. I also like how the retention screws are separated from those that attach the belt clips to the holster. This allows for separate and non-interfering adjustments. The retention screws are Phillips heads, which are much more common than the specific size Allen key that the TXC requires. It too has a bungee system that connects the mag caddy to the holster itself, but it is slightly stiffer than TXC, so it doesn't have any slop to it unless you loosen the shot cord too much, but it still flexes with your body and has higher tolerances. For compatibility, the holster can take a ton of different weapon and weapon light combinations, and there are many lights to choose from once you select your pistol model. I bought the Inforce Wild 1 version for my Glock, and it fits perfectly. For comfort, the bungee system is better than the X1, 
because it has more rigidity but still bends as you do. So I really like that. However, the sweat guards do stand a little taller than the TXC, but this usually isn't a problem when your weapon's holstered, so I disregard that. The cost, the cost is rough. Built out as I have it, it ran me approximately $160 with the weapon light added onto it. And I'm sure most of you are running weapon lights on your EDCs, as you should, so keep that in mind. But with the advantages over the TXE, I was willing to pay this and needed something reliable that could also handle my Enforced Wild 1. Finally, the Axis Elite is also pretty customizable. You can change the color of the holster and shot cord, and it does come with a lot of optional add-ons. But just keep in mind, those also come with a price tag. All in all, for the Tier 1 Concealed Axis Elite, I give it a thumbs up for concealment, construction, compatibility, and comfort. A sideways thumb for customization, and big ol' thumbs down for cost. Finally, the Safari Land and Halo Strategic Partners Incog X. This holster is relatively new to the market. I have used Safari Lands outside the waistband holsters and knew they were extremely reliable, so I had to buy it as soon as it came out. This holster nails it in several areas. It does a great job of concealing your weapon. It can easily be adjusted for ride depth significantly. You can loosen the Phillips screws on the belt clips and slide the holster higher or lower on your waistline as you see fit. Its concealment claw is very sturdy and extremely easy to change depth because it comes with three different concealment enhancing strut shims that make it more or less angled against your body and they're super easy to swap out for one another. The Incog X is also the strongest construction of the three in my opinion. The quote unquote Bolteron polymer feels very durable and sturdy while also comfortable with the exterior suede wrapped body. The retention screws are also really easy to adjust as they are Phillips screws and they are separate from the belt clips, unlike the TXC. It also uses the ejection port of the gun to retain the weapon rather than retaining via the weapon light. This makes reholstering feel extremely positive and snappy, which I really like. However, I did have an issue with the retention screw backing out within the first week or so of holster use. I randomly found retention screw parts in my shoes going down my pants after sitting down in my office chair. I also had heard administrative results complain about this problem, that it needed some Loctite, so I did the same thing. Once I found my desired retention level, I just gave it some blue Loctite. The Mad Caddy is also very simply yet effectively built. It has a separate but similar retention screw so you can adjust it as you see fit, and it can be completely removed from the main holster without even having to touch the belt clips. So you can still wear the holster by itself with no Mad Caddy and no need to buy a new brand new holster. For compatibility, Safari Land is still releasing new weapon fits for this holster, but it definitely has the least amount of weapon and weapon light combinations available on the market right now. For comfort, the Incog X is awesome. The suede exterior helps prevent you from getting sweaty and sliding around on the holster. It also rides at the perfect height, and I don't find my knuckles getting caught in my belt line like I do with the Tier 1. You can separately adjust the Mad Caddy height as well, or just remove it entirely. And the cost is very competitive. The best of the three holsters that I have when equally built out. It only ran me about 120 bucks, and could be even better if you use a military discount or similar coupon code. Finally, the Incog X is not very customizable in terms of color, but I find it to be pretty attractive as is. I really like the gray and the red combination. I also really like the fact that I can remove the Mad Caddy whenever I want, since the belt clips are not attached to it. So, when taking everything into account, the Safari Land and Haley Strategic Partners Incog X, I give it a thumbs up for concealment, construction, comfort, and cost, sideways thumb for compatibility, and a thumbs down for customization. If you agree with me and you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down let me know why in the comments. Please help me get started on YouTube by subscribing for more videos. And if you haven't seen my first video yet, click on the link on the screen to check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Know your ROE, and see you next time.